Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to another episode of The Bloom Podcast, where we discuss everything self-development, wellness, and evolution. I am your host, Delilah, and in this season, we are highlighting some of Houston's most impactful women who are out here killing it all while serving their purpose. Alrighty, everyone, so help me welcome Miss Hawa. Hello. Hey, I'm so happy that you're here. Thanks for having me. Yes. I usually start the episode with how we know each other. Okay. Right? Okay. So Hawa is one of my really good friends from college. Um, we have recently reconnected yeah. and it's been great seeing you evolve yeah. into different passions and pursuing a lot of things that you are trying out, I yeah, would say, right? Trying out. Yeah. Um and it's just been great seeing you yeah. on social media and just keeping up with you, your creative side. The modeling. modeling everything. Yeah. So tell everybody a little bit about you. So I, I'm more focused on modeling, right? Mm-hmm. And I was actually telling my friend yesterday, um, he was asking, because obviously like New York Fashion Week, so he was mm-hmm. asking me, did you walk any? And I was like, I'm not really for the runway. Like, I don't want to, I would love to eventually, mm-hmm. but I don't really want to right now Mm -hmm. i'm more like editorial i'm more of a creative you know like i want to whether it's like direct or like style you know what i mean yeah so yeah like modeling yes is what i do right i I don't mean to cut you off but how i just got back literally today flew in last night or today um this morning actually this morning she flew in from fashion week to come be on the bloom so i really appreciate that love the energy the energy the ambition i'm sleepy but it's fine <laughs> you look beautiful though oh thanks yes. so you spoke on being more on the editorial side explain that to the people that don't know what okay. exactly that means and by people i mean me so yeah what is it what, you is know that? what that no. means what do you mean is it like more like so editorial magazines? okay so that would be kind of what it is okay more like high fashion mm-hmm. or you would say editorials is just like very like i wouldn't say very creative but like just more so on the creative side okay you know like artists or photographers trying to bring their vision to life okay you know like when you think editorial think vogue or okay. you know what i mean not like gap and like gap JC more Penny. commercial you know okay commercial more okay. of a commercial thing i'm open to that you know like if i love the brand and i love the vision that's yeah i think that's the thing for me like if i love the brand i love the vision Mm -hmm. i'm open to it beautiful yeah okay so no runway if the opportunity presented itself would you take at it or not i don't know like i need meaning Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know like if i get a runway that gives me some kind of meaning Mm -hmm. because it's such a rush when you think runway like change come change come change go you know Mm -hmm. whereas like uh working with like photographers or creatives um i just like being involved to bring your vision to life in the creative side as well yeah okay got it that's beautiful yeah so you're like actually tying in with the brand yeah but i mean models don't really get a say Mm. if you think about it like you're here to bring my vision to life yeah fine but like if you want to be involved let's say my friend hits me up hey i have this music video going can you style or Mm. i have like i have a concept for a shoot do you want to be in the shoot? Yeah. And if I have to style myself or, you know, like, we'll make like a Pinterest board or I don't know what you call it. Like a mood board. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And see the process, I guess, okay. is what I really love. So tell us, because I have a lot of questions, but before we deep dive into all the questions, I want to know where, what piqued your interest and how did it even come about? Because what piqued my interest yes. in modeling? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I asked because um, I'm meeting you at a different space in your yeah, life i'm i'm so different now, yeah right? but in a great way you i recognize feel like me i mean physically yes yeah but like yeah. but okay so persona it, uh, yeah i feel like you've always had like a calm at least that's what you've oh, always yeah like, i'm yeah. very calm yeah very chill um but before you came on when we reconnected it was like nearly a three-hour conversation of like oh, just yeah, everything which i good. really loved and i was like uh, it just it, might, it meant a lot to me for you to be that able to good. be vulnerable and open yeah, up and just good. like share a lot so i really appreciate that because i know i try to be very conscious of like setting a safe space for people and making yeah. sure that they're seen and that they're heard and that they can be vulnerable um mm-hmm. so i always like to tell people that i know it takes a lot so thank you for that for allowing me yeah. in um but i am meeting you in a different space because i feel like the hell that i knew before obviously we were like really young we were in college yeah you know still figuring ourselves 
ourselves out. Um, I recently told Sam the other day that I seen this post that says like your 20s, you have to think about it. like, let's say you're like 23, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you're like a three year old adult. So like you're just like going into your adulthood. So it's like you're still figuring oh, it. Yeah, you're like yeah, figuring it nice. all out, navigating everything. Um, so I'm glad that we're like a lot older and we can like meet at this space yeah. and like really understand each other at this time, you know, in this season. So, yeah, so now that where you're at now, what piqued your interest to go into modeling and be, like, like dive into your creative side? Because I love yeah. creators in general. Like, it could be music, anything. art, anything. Yeah. Just creators in general, yeah. Well, okay, so I can, I mean, obviously, you know, like, I've been into, like, fashion, mm-hmm. like, even in college, you know? Yeah. I would, like, like I really like dressing up and everything. But I at the time, I didn't know what side of creativity I wanted to be in. Mm-hmm. I just knew I wanted to be a model because my idea of modeling is just, like, looking nice. Yeah. But then after, like, going in, you know, I now I understand what it's like to be a model. It's an actual job. And I think that's why I don't really want to do runway. I just want to enjoy it. Yeah. I don't want to make, like, the things I love my job. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, so... I mean, that's really what it was, like, just enjoying, like, um, the dressing up and everything. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I think I look good. You do look good. I feel like you've always looked good. Yeah. 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 I think the only thing that's probably changed is, like, you're more, you're giving me more, like, actual fashion. That's something that not everybody can do. It takes time. Yeah. You know, like, I feel like in Texas, I can't really, like, no do this you know people wear t-shirts and jeans yeah and to exactly everywhere and everything and yeah. so like i think just being around more creatives mm-hmm. it really made me feel comfortable like i'm i don't dress funny you know yeah, like being course. certain people make you feel like you dress funny mm-hmm. because they don't get it or you're too eccentric exactly mm-hmm. but i mean just being around creatives and like you know you're allowed to like live your life yeah so I think I diverted from the question, but I did kind of answer. (laughs) You did, you did, you did, yes. Um, So tell us a little about Fashion Week. How was it? You just got back today. So how was it? How was the experience? What did you do? Oh, Fashion Week is incredible. Like, I haven't even gotten to, like, half of Fashion Week. uh I went for, like, one. No. I mean, there's, like, pre-Fashion Week, Mm -hmm. and then there's the Fashion Week. So I did the pre-Fashion Week, and then I celebrated, like, one and a half day of Fashion Week. But that, it was really good. You know, Mm -hmm. like, you get to see all the outfits, Mm -hmm. the fashion, the brands, you know, like, it's Mm -hmm. Fashion Week. So, yeah, it was good. Dope. Okay, is there anybody specific that you saw that really stood out to you? Well, it's New York. You see a lot of people are, like, you know like if you're pinpointing like celebrities or whatever like Mm -hmm. it's new york like you're bound to see whoever whatever models you know but um i think what i really enjoyed seeing is just like my people as Mm -hmm. in like people that look like me yeah or like people that i i aspired to like be like whether Mm -hmm. it's like i saw you on instagram i love what you're doing i get to like walk past you or i get to see you in person Mm -hmm. i think approaching is a bit different you know like depends on the in the place you're at i don't want to like say state or like city or country you know Mm -hmm. because it's all different um so i don't know like just see my people just you know be out here like dressing up being a part of like fashion week yeah you know yeah Yeah. so for somebody that's aspiring to be in your shoes um what are some tips that you'd give them my shoes are really huge (laughs) But, Literally. So, okay, so this is how I actually started modeling, right? Okay. Um, at first, I had an agency, mm-hmm. but that was when, like, COVID kind of hit, you know you know what I mean? Yeah. And then you weren't really getting any work or anything. So I took it, like, fr- in my own hands, mm-hmm. right? So I started with, like, um, taking pictures, asking my sister to, like, take a picture of me. I would dress myself up, mm-hmm. have the whole concept. Or, like, collaborating with, like, a friend in, like, college, you know, like, mm-hmm. Yeah. socialize and networking seeing other creatives and then you shoot with them you're building your portfolio okay you know what i mean and then um well right now i freelance i don't have any agency i just network and like get my own job mm-hmm. um and so like clubhouse you know like i use clubhouse yeah. i book most of my my harper's bazaar 
the feature that I got on Harper's Bazaar. Yeah. That was from Instagram. Beautiful. Yeah. And I saw him yesterday, actually. Aw, yeah, how was that? I mean, it was nice. Yeah. Yeah, it was nice. Reconnecting. Yeah, yes. it was really nice. Um, so what's been one of your favorite shoots so far? I think it was the Harper's Bazaar shoot. Yeah. Because the thing is, like, whenever I go to shoots, uh, with whether it's, like, photographers or whatever the thing is, I just want to give you your time back. Mm, yes. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. Like, you're putting time in, so I need to show up. Yeah. And that's just my thing. Like, I need you to love me and want to shoot with me again. Yeah. What's been, like, one of your least favorite encounters? Not to be, like, controversial or anything. Encounters but, like, in the industry? Or, yeah. Like, what do you mean? Yeah. Oh, I mean. <laughs> you're like, where do I start? Girl. I mean, obviously, like, whenever you're beginning, uh -huh. there's so much anxiety and, like, insecurity. Mm -hmm. Like, you have to, like, pick yourself up. Like, look them dead in the eye. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, you cannot be like, well, it's okay to be insecure. Like, it's fine. Just like, not I'm not, like, it. dissing it. Yeah. You know? Like, it's fine. Don't beat yourself up. Mm -hmm. But, like, least favorite, it's just, like, it depends where you go. Let's say California. Like, there's a different lifestyle there. Mm -hmm. um, where there's, like, being rejected, acceptance. You yeah. know? I think that's just... Because you're dealing with, like, body image, like, mm -hmm. beauty standards... Maybe, like, you're just not the vision for, like, whatever project it is. Yeah. You know, like... And are they usually not really nice about that, about telling you no, or the rejection part? I mean, it's either you being ignored or, like, you're just not going to get the gig or... Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. That would be, like, my least favorite. <laughs> Obviously, like, <laughs> like everybody yeah. as much as you can, yeah. Yeah. And, or maybe, like, working with, like, shitty people. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've really, really had that. Mm -hmm. But, like, I mean, I just really ignore... I ignore things. Like, I don't let people get to me or anything. Like, yeah. I don't... Like, I just can't... You can't do it. Like, maybe, like, before my... Like, maybe, like, my early 20s or whatever. But I really don't care for anyone to get to me. Like, you have a problem with me? That's your business. <laughs> that ain't got nothing to do with me. You know Love what I mean? It, like, yeah. What can I do? Yeah you're right yeah. and what's been one of your biggest like pivotal moments where you're like okay this didn't go as i planned but i'm gonna take advantage of this moment to just like figure it out or just move differently um so i would say like certain shoots that i want or like that i've gotten uh, maybe at the time I'm not like okay they're not paying for the shoot but I'm like okay I need this feature to look good on my like portfolio oh, yeah. or whatever so I will make it work whether it's like um, let's say it's in another state and I need to make it make it there I will find a way to make the money for the flight mm -hmm. you know what I mean yeah like I told you like um, the last eight months or so or maybe like a year was like super hard yeah and like I was contracted like work i mean obviously like you have a full-time job to yeah. make your money yeah. and then you have like this because freelancing doesn't like completely pay you right right you know what i mean yeah so and it's always good to keep a job to right. be able to um cover like your living expenses and then pour into your passions mm -hmm. i did also watch an interview where um i think it was like charlemagne the god like a lot of the stuff that they do wear is like borrowed or rented right. or just for like certain like events like red carpet events yeah. and they like give it back but that's like yeah. known right that's known like designers want their stuff out there mm -hmm. so it, like it's just like uh I, I think i was talking to my friend the other day about like how influencers really changed marketing mm, of you course know what i mean yeah because like your followers really trust you because you are the human and it's like a bit faster or easier mm -hmm. because when you think like digital marketing yeah digital marketing it, it kind of takes time because you have to like get like the traffic going or the data you know what i mean whereas yeah. like influencers already gathered it yeah. accidentally anyways yeah yeah so and then just building that brand right. up yeah. so i mean designers want to give influencers um their designs to kind of rock you know it's fine it's fine yeah. like it's fashion it's like there's no big deal yeah you know but like obviously like if you're not educating yourself and you're just scrolling on instagram you're gonna like lose your mind yeah. because you're thinking like this is All this, this is real or, and you know yeah. what i mean you won't like 
die to go get an eight thousand dollar Balenciaga yeah. jacket. You know what I mean? Like act. Uh, what does it say? Live in your wage or act your wage, please. Yeah, live in <laughs> within your means. Wait, exactly. And what are your thoughts on fast fashion? Oh, honestly, I'm not like a huge fan of fast fashion. But I'm saying this because like, oh, <laughs> that's, Wait, that's so bad, girl. It's so bad. I, for the people that don't know what fast fashion is, can yeah. you explain it some a little bit and then give well, us your thoughts? Well, just think Shein or Fashion Nova. When Kim Kardashian was saying that, um, like her, what is it, sketches or like her clothing, Skins? just like the outfits that she wears, like they'll have an oh. off-brand company come in and make it like two days later and they're already oh, making yeah. money fashion off of Nova it. Does yeah, that so, so that's many what many fast times. fashion is right, for people yeah. that don't know. Don't get me wrong, I love me a little Shein, honey. I'm wearing I can't Shein, do Shein right now. Really? Yes, very basic, but I'm acting. I'm acting. Um, what is it? What did you say? Stay within live, your means. <laughs> live within your means. This is okay. my means for now. Okay. But yeah. hopefully, eventually, that that that'll change. Yeah. Yeah. I used to be I a just big. Can't do it. Yeah. I mean, I get it. You're like in a whole different lifestyle, though. Um, yeah. I used to be a big like thrifter like I used to thrift a lot oh, thrifting is good thrifting is so much fun yeah. I don't know why and I, you know what I think I know why social media obviously we're influenced to a certain degree you know um, but yeah I, used, I feel I was telling Karina this the other day I feel like I used to be a lot more creative like I would prefer to always go like thrifting over going to like this was like in high school to like Charlotte Roost or something because people would ask me like, oh, yeah. oh where'd you get it and it's like oh I'm the, I'm the I'm kind of maybe the only person that has it because it's a thrift at the thrift store you yeah know? exactly uh, I yeah. don't mind me a good thrift shopping trip mm-hmm. but um yeah I can honestly say that I have definitely picked up on fast fashion just because of social media yeah, yeah. I mean it's quick it's fast fashion yeah. for a reason like it's quick like you get the good d- right designs I mean I just don't like the quality of it oh yeah it's very you know? cheap yeah yeah and speaking of yesterday we went to an event and i was gonna wear this dress and i'm so glad i didn't wear it because there was this girl that had it there and i was like oh. that's the other thing about like uh, fast fashion like yeah. everybody has it you know i can't do that girl i will pass out <laughs> i like, was like so how much thought goes into your outfits it really comes very easy to me okay right but my thing is like now i'm going for more of like a grown-up look like you know like I wouldn't necessarily say rebranding, but kind of saying rebranding. Yeah. Because I wear everything or whatever yeah. makes sense. But I'm more of like, uh, I need to like cover certain things. Okay. You know? And um, I threw this on. Like, I'm not going to lie to you. Okay. Nando helped me. Nice. What does Nando know about fashion? Nothing. <laughs> he knows so much. He okay. knows a little bit. You've he been educating dress. him? He can dress. Okay. Yeah. What one thing that I aspire to be able to do one day is sh- like be able to Okay, I've had this thing where it's like streetwear, right? Okay. I love seeing other people dressed up very comfy, like mix and matching and putting like streetwear together. But I just feel like I could never probably pull that off, you know, or I could like pr- I couldn't go to a store and be like, "Oh, this hat and these pants and these go sneakers together. go well like yeah uh, but i wish one day one somebody would be like Delilah, you you love streetwear like let me help you put something yeah. together i don't know why i just love it so much but i just i stick with like heels and dresses heels, yeah. and skirts but they fit you and that's yeah. what you like and that's i think that's just what fashion is about yeah whatever you want or whatever you like yeah always get quality over quantity because mm-hmm. you keep it longer okay and you could probably pass it down to yeah kids. yeah or you know vintage i love it our kids are gonna call us like can i have your vintage like girl no it's from 2023 <laughs> you kidding you know it's funny we just uh my best friend just sent me a tiktok about that uh, it was this girl that was recording her younger sister mm-hmm. and the girl was probably like either our age or a little bit older than us like a couple years older maybe like two three years older than us and her sister was like like entering in her into her teen years and she's like say it again for the camera what did you say she's like oh we just went thrift shopping and i found this vintage camera but the camera was like you remember those little the little ones that were like this and they had like the little screen and then you like press the button and then it comes out a little bit remember those oh like canon or something yes the nikon ones and she was like that's not vintage yeah that was literally like 
in the early 2000s not, not even oh, like mid early 2000s i think we did that to our parents too yeah and they're probably like what's but wrong like, with these kids like this is a vintage camera not even this is like a modern no, this is vin- very modern yeah modern like yeah. polaroid but you know yeah this is but you would think they'd call like the polaroids a vintage this camera. is um was it accessories or like uh aesthetics yeah i sometimes i use things for aesthetics yes like, what, what, do you, what, would, what would you describe your aesthetic to be like anything that makes sense like mm-hmm. let's say i wear a dress mm-hmm. and i see this flower mm-hmm. i will pick it up and just hold it as my aesthetic okay yeah nice. like a anything it's my, yeah so anything natural nice i mean i think it's also an excuse let's say um I just don't want to feel like I'm going to be on my phone too much. Mm. So I will hold a cup or a drink, even if it's empty. Mm. And I'll just be like, aesthetics. <laughs> and nobody's going to be like, it's tacky or whatever, you know, like. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. How do you prepare yourself for a shoot or anything that you have going on? Oh, I would say get rest for Ooh, sure. That's a good one. And um also make sure you take care of your body because like Mm. that's your job yeah you know you get paid to take care of yourself yeah and you know you're gonna book a lot more so take care of yourself um sleep i haven't slept Mm -hmm. much yeah which is bad Uh, i kind of feel it and um eat well Mm. hydrate I feel like you've always been really good at that, though. Yeah, we just like, don't eat at the right times. Like, mm-hmm. we don't really have, like, three meals a day. You're just busy trying to, like, rush, go somewhere, do this, yeah. pick up, like, something quick, you know? Yeah. I think that's just, like, the U.S. for you, though. It's the U.S., yeah. yeah. for sure. Like, when I go to Ghana, like, they're eating three times a day. Mm-hmm. I had to, like, you know, get adjusted to it, yeah. but eventually. And then I come back, and it's, like, same routine because here time is kind of money yeah people in the u.s like live to work and a lot of people out of like of the u.s like work to live live exactly yeah that's beautiful actually yeah because like you you have like family you have things you really enjoy yeah and here you can barely get like a two-week vacation yeah i mean it's america you know kind of <laughs> yeah i don't know like i was telling my friend i want to go live in mexico for a month oh, that'd be beautiful i've been twice actually mm-hmm. and um i really like it but i think i may have to like go with someone mm-hmm. because last time i got scammed shut <laughs> the fuck up girl how i can't even speak of it because (laughs) i'm so traumatized oh no like it's so bad but you speak spanish how uh see yes i do i want to say she's a trilingual queen trilingual i speak other languages besides spanish okay i did get scammed but then i kind of put my foot down because like so my phone got messed up Mm -hmm. um and like we were like at the airbnb me and my friend and there was a concierge Mm. and then he was a concierge <laughs> he didn't even work there <gasps> stop like he works there but not really you know how it is like back yeah. home like you work there but you don't like you're just helping your friend that owns a company okay yeah, yeah so yeah. he was basically like helping make sure everything goes okay there mm-hmm. he wasn't really like an like we took your social security and gave you a job at the uh, corporation you can't get away with shit like that here. girl okay so the first night i got there i got scammed because the construction worker was like oh you can park here for ten dollars it was free parking <laughs> he took my ten dollars <laughs> and it was free parking fuck uh-huh. but i was too tired to just say anything so i just gave him ten dollars uh-huh. and ten dollars i wake up in the morning and they're like no it's free parking like you can because ten dollars is not a little bit over there it's not a little bit this man had him a whole meal <laughs> probably paid his rent too uh-huh <laughs> took my ten dollars he definitely paid that water bill girl <laughs> i'm dead uh-huh and um so the other scam was like um my friend oh not my friend i told my friend i was like hey oh my phone's messed up i'm here i want to take content and stuff i can't have a messed up phone yeah so we went to the shop me and the concierge (laughs) and he Uh fixed the he fixed he got it he got them to fix the phone but like he was speaking in spanish tell her it's this much tell her this is this much and this whole time they didn't know you spoke he didn't know i spoke spanish but i just 
the thing is like i could have went by myself but like i don't know the place mm. you know what i mean yeah. like i don't want to like get lost or like uber is gonna take me you know what i mean like mm-hmm. not to like you know but oh, yeah me. yeah yeah so um he was telling the guy to tell me that it's this much and then after i was just like whatever like leave it it's not much and like pesos or whatever mm-hmm. so just leave it and then after that i was like gracias and i said it in spanish and then he was just like Tú sabes español. I'm like, sí, yo entiendo español. You know what I mean? Like, uh-huh. I told him, I was like, yes, motherfucker, I fucking speak Spanish. <laughs> Try to fucking scam me. But I left it alone, uh-huh. you know? But what, was he trying to get more money out of you? Yeah, he really was. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And then other things happened. That is too much trauma to even touch on. Oh. Yeah, so. Hey, but you still want to go back. I'm going to go back, girl. <laughs> I went, it was Tulum. Okay. Yeah, I went Yeah, to well, Tulum. that's a very touristy spot, though. Yeah. Yeah. But still kind of local. It's more like... Lo- like my friends and i really like doing local stuff mm-hmm. you know like, that's the thing it's not Times square yeah or like cancun yeah it's like the mm-hmm. to the nature yeah that's one thing that i had to learn it's like everybody has different like traveling styles there's certain people that you just you don't can't travel tra- you with. can't travel like, they're, with they're forcing you to like <laughs> go it's like no take my picture like you just want to take pictures at a time take the picture <laughs> We were just talking about that with my previous guest. Where it's like, there's certain people that get it, you know? Yeah. And there's certain people that just, it's not for them. But yeah. don't, I'm with the people that, okay, if it's not for you, cool. Right. But don't make me feel bad for doing I what I enjoy do that. doing. Friends that make you feel bad for, like, doing what you enjoy. Yeah. I can't do it. Like, I can't, tra- I can travel because I think I can travel with whoever. Like, uh, I'm just gonna tell you straight up, like you're bullshitting. Yeah. You know, like you know, I'm straight yeah. up. Like I'm gonna just tell you, or I'm gonna ignore it. Yeah. You know, like. But it's like I, I'm okay. So what is your traveling style? Like, what do you like to do? We must take pictures for sure. Of content or, is a must. If you're not yeah. there to shoot content, you didn't go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's true. Uh-huh. But I need, and we need. I want to do like local stuff. Like yes. when I go to a certain country. I don't want to do like resort All the touristy stuff. You know what I mean? Like no. I want to meet the people that are there that grew up I'm there. Not- I'm not sure if you've heard of like Dutsi Desemba no. in Africa, like whether it's Nigeria or Ghana. Mm-hmm. A lot of shit happens, but I mean you just have to like know someone there mm-hmm. to survive because like someone is always going to like try to make their money. Right. Wherever it is that you go, if you don't know the language or whatever, yeah. you know. So either like maybe like educate yourself there or like go with friends. Mm-hmm. That way you don't, yeah. you know what I mean? That know how to get around and stuff. Yeah, like yeah. even I went to Ghana. I knew people there. I still got scammed. <gasps> okay, well, how? Girl, why do I keep getting scammed? <laughs> oh, like, what the fuck? What, wait, what happened in Ghana? Well, I mean, you're going to get scammed from like your accent of course mm. obviously like it's like you you don't speak like the they know you're act- not from yeah there. so they're probably increase the price of like mm. let's say a tomato is like one dollar mm-hmm. probably increase it to like three four dollars and then they'll try to like lower it lower it. you know yeah. you know how it is like yeah yeah like you're negotiate. like yeah they, don't, they know they'll tell you like oh i know you weren't from here by the way you dress or the way you did you style yourself or like your accent or Ooh. Child. luckily we did not get scammed in pr because we made friends out there that were amazing friends and they took care of us while we were out there but like i can give you an example we were at this like local bar oh well, yeah we're at we're at a bar yeah and i wanted a hookah and he was like 50 dollars, and i was like mm, that's a bit much but okay yeah. like i mean the lowest i've done yeah. is like 25 the highest i've done is like 60 it just depends yeah. on where you're at and then our friend was like hey, hey, hey what did you ask him i said like, i asked him for the hookah he's like how much did he charge you on like 50 so then he went and he like talked to him blah 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 and he knew the dj there and he was like it's gonna be 20 bucks because you know he knows the dj he's like next time don't do that next time ask me and i was like okay okay oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah and then we ended up i think giving him like a 20 dollar tip but but yeah, oh, okay, yeah. i was definitely gonna get got honey so do you have any other passions outside of mod- modeling right now or is that like your biggest focus um right now um other passions yeah like things that i enjoy doing Mm -hmm. like maybe like traveling or um educating myself i'm very addicted to like self-care and you know what i mean like so what does that look like for you taking care of myself Mm -hmm. 
shit ignoring people <laughs> and their bs yeah like i cannot argue that's one thing for me yeah like that is firm boundaries if you're coming here to argue in my life you're gonna argue with yourself <laughs> period because we can have a conversation thank you i just will not like like you know what i mean like some people mm -hmm. will just um approach a situation with aggressiveness which that's what i define as arguing or right wanting like an argument yeah so whenever you're calm you know we can have a conversation a healthy conversation you know what i mean and yeah. obviously like it has nothing to do with me like however they respond you know it really has nothing to do with me yeah so i love that why. you i love that you have that like emotional like self-awareness it's beautiful and i commend you for that because i don't know if you've always had that i feel like you've had it for the I'm most just part chill. yeah yeah but um i recently had a situation like that where it was like okay this discussion is no longer a healthy one mm -hmm. and it's turning into an argument which i do not want to participate yeah. in and i have nothing else to add because at this point you're not listening to understand me you're listening to response and you need time to, you know, figure that out. Because yeah. I think once you have a certain level of awareness, you start noticing how you can't take a lot of things personal. And it's a lot of project projecting. It's a lot of, like, just trauma that you haven't dealt with and you don't, don't want to take the time to, like, heal from. Um, and it's hard to have that type of conversation with somebody that doesn't have that awareness because they don't see it that way. So at this point, we have two different perspectives yeah. on life and, like, how this conversation is going. So if it ta if it needs to take two days two weeks two months for you to just yeah. calm down like i have nothing to like add. go away yeah. yeah and the sad part that i've had to well before i get into that what i've had to learn about people um one thing that my therapist taught me was like not to take a lot of things personal especially with people that don't yeah, have that type of awareness because that. i'm gonna use the example of like a kid a teacher yelling at a kid um the teacher so the kid can say like my teacher yells at me my teacher is mean to me um and she started telling me that that that's something that i would be taking personal right mm -hmm. so instead of saying like my teacher yells at me and my teacher is mean to me it's like no my teacher yells and my teacher is mean that's just who she is as a character that's so good yeah so it's like i've learned to not take a lot of shit personal because it's like dude whatever you got going on over there you need that's to figure your it problem. out yeah and the fact and i've and i've and i've come to this point in my life where i try to let people have a safe space whenever they're coming to me with like certain information or if they want to be vulnerable so i make sure like yeah. okay you're seen you're heard is this a safe space for you to even open up i can can i ask you like even sometimes when i want to vent like i make sure to ask like is it okay if i vent or is it okay if i tell you because i have a lot oh to yeah because sometimes like some people are not ready to hear it you know yeah, and then like, some people are just not maybe maybe they were going through a bad day what do i look like coming and pouring more of my like yeah, emotions that's onto true, you that's so true. i'm very considerate and a like take other people's feelings into consideration yeah um but yeah so yeah it's, it's important to have that my type friend of does that actually like mm -hmm. whenever she's going through something like a mental breakdown when she calls me she's like hey are you in a safe space are yeah. you okay to talk Aww. and i'm like yeah yeah i'm always in a safe space to talk like yeah. i don't let anything get to me like that's your problem yeah you know what i mean yeah. so like whatever you're dealing with that's you yeah. and i just have to hear it i don't have to internalize anything right you know what i mean yeah like i feel like i've come very far with like the self-healing or like beautiful healing yeah uh yeah and i think that's gonna be forever too like it gets consistently better. evolve yeah yeah it gets and better. it brings you more peace when you know how to handle certain situations so yeah. one thing i do want to say well, before I say that, I want to backtrack to the thing that I learned. Um, I had the, I had a hard realization and a learning point where I had to understand that not everybody is going to heal and not everybody wants to heal and not everybody wants to face like their traumas and their hard times to want to become better, yeah. which is, which sucks. Cause I mean, I would want that it's in exhausting everybody being yeah. around people like that actually. Yeah. And I think when you love certain people you would want that for them because you know how much peace yeah. it brings you it's like i want to see that for you too you know yeah but everybody's healing journey is different and then it's just sad to know not to like ugh. it's just sad to see that you could actually really leave this earth sad. without like, even taking the time to really enjoy like experience that peace you know obviously like in my culture is just completely different like yeah. i had to overcome like too much yeah 
and I don't know, maybe I'm not the ideal, um, I don't want to say beauty standard, but I'm just not the ideal when you think of like, uh, let's say a certain culture, the women are supposed to be this, the women are supposed to be that. Yeah. I think I'm... Like maybe, society standards? You know what I mean? Like, I kind of feel like I'm not necessarily that, mm -hmm. but I don't give a shit, you know? Yeah. But it's not like to be mean or anything. It's just like, I cannot live for you. Like, right. I have to live for myself and yeah. do what makes... It's just exhausting to pretend. Yeah. And that's what I've done, like, most of my life. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Kind of like pretending to uh, be okay with this misogyny, patriarchy. You know what I mean? Like, um, for instance, like, um, the whole... Uh, you're a woman, go do this. You're a woman, go do that. I'm like, a man can't wash a dish. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, we're home, me and my brothers. Mm -hmm. But then because you're the girl, they're like, go wash the dishes. Mm -hmm. You're a woman. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then it's like, it never made sense to me because yeah. I'm like, you're using your two hands. It doesn't <laughs> take too many brain cells <laughs> to do this. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. why is it a woman's job? It's very yeah. confusing. But you just still, I mean, it's 2023. And as parents, you should still want to build your children in general to know how to yeah i think it's do changed. the basics it's changed yeah. too many times but like because i went through it those are my trauma yeah yeah you know what i, I mean? commend you on having that awareness and like breaking yourself down to build yourself back yeah. up into the woman that you want to be and already breaking those generational cycles so you know you know what you it's want to instill hard. into your children yeah yeah like i want the best for my kids and as far as kids really like at a point i was just like Mm, I don't know if I want to do all of that. Yeah. Because I just don't want to pass down any trauma. Yeah. But I think, like, if you're constantly working on yourself, educating yourself, it's fine. Yeah. Because obviously, like, you're married, kids are going to come. Yeah. You know, there's no unselfish reason to have a kid. So don't, like, work on yourself so you don't fuck them up. Right. You know what I mean? And I think that's. Uh, that's so beautiful i think that's one of the reasons why i've also waited on having kids um oh you want kids of course i want Wait, kids. how many kids do you want i want at least three <laughs> stop it that's too much no little that's like tiny little babies just running 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 yeah. i love kids i'm a big kid person no you do love kids yeah, yeah I love you kids. do love kids i love kids and i think that's the biggest thing where it's like i as a mother i wouldn't want to fail my kids and a lot of things that maybe a lot of people don't take too much into consideration because growing up it was like, oh, you fall in love and then you marry this person and then you have kids with them. But it's like there's so much that I would want my kids to experience that I didn't get to experience, like yeah. a two-parent household. So it's like before that even occurs, I need to make sure that my husband and I are, you know, okay. are good. And I need to know what type of father I'm giving to my children because that's the what I say this all the time. It's like the one thing I don't want to do bad is like have not the best father for my children. You know what I mean? Yeah. I want my children to be able to have an amazing father, father. a great mother. A great person, um, actually. Yes, a lot of things that, like me, I had to break myself down to build myself back up into the woman that I wanted, yeah. you know, that I want to be. And be, be able to make sure that my kids don't, uh, like, not make sure that I don't pass down any of those traumas, traumas. to my kids, you know? We're going to pass on trauma, whether we like it or not. Yeah, though, like, I know. We just have to, like, be aware and, like, kind of, like, acknowledge it or fix it. Yeah, for you sure. You know, like, we're going to have trauma. How many years have we lived on fucking Earth? And how many fucking, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we're first generation. Yeah. And... Yeah. our parents brought it like you know <laughs> and it still goes on yeah. because we have to do the hard work yeah. you know what i mean so yeah. we're gonna pass down trauma that's true and whatever form their trauma looks like because i could say like, that's oh true. there's nowhere they're nowhere near what i yeah. went through but they're gonna have their own form of trauma whatever yeah. that looks like but as long as i don't repeat a lot of the stuff that like was passed yeah. down to me you know but also with like our parents you know i'm learning to like have grace for my mom and be like very oh, understanding they did their thing actually yeah so it takes and, a lot to do like yeah. what they've done yeah. yeah and recently i've been seeing that like my mom's been my mom's the type of person where i commend her because she hasn't like She's not stuck in her ways. She's open to change. She's open to evolving. She's open. She's just very open-minded, and she wants yeah. better for herself. And she's 
a completely different person, which I'm really happy that my brother and sister get to experience um, her at where she's at now because it's completely different than when she like was with um, raising my brother and I, like the older one. Um, so they, they don't have to experience a lot of the stuff that we did. Um, but where she's at now, like I'm just like really proud of her. Like she's she's come yeah. a long way. So just having grace, being understanding, and then just having those open conversations. And I'm blessed enough for her to like actually listen. And yeah, yeah. your mom's always been supportive. Though. Yeah, she like, has. She would come to like your events in college and everything. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. yeah. Love her. Yeah. Love me some her. Yep. Hard eyes. <laughs> Love me some her. <laughs> okay, I wanted to backtrack. So when you were talking about your friend, every time that she calls you, she makes sure that you're in a good space for her to open up in events. So when you said that, it kind of sparked a memory in my head when we were back in college. You may not know this, but when I I had called you one time and I was I had called you one time and I was in the middle of experiencing my first like anxiety slash panic attack. Um and it was just like you like walked me through the whole thing you like talked to me you just you know you've always been so mellow and so chill so like yeah. just like eased me i'm very so, chill yeah it's so, so like, annoying thanks for that every time i tell i my, remember actually slightly. yeah but the thing is like i'm always gonna be there for you you know yeah i'm very grateful for that and thankful for you throughout all those years because i look back and i'm like I honestly would not have been my friend. I don't know how y'all play a put up with Girl, me. I was so much. But I'm not going to tell. Like, I don't like to um, discard of people. Yeah. Like, I cannot discard of human. Different upbringings, different culture. You yeah. Know, but, like, if someone is down. Yeah. The, don't be rude. You yeah. know what I mean? If you have nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all. And if yeah. you can, you know. Yeah. Help. Yeah. Thank you for But those were nice times. Like, even Samantha. Oh, uh, girl, I don't know how many times <laughs> I'm tired of Samantha's shit. But Sam, I would tell her. Yeah. Like, I girl, just, I she like, would just laugh. <laughs> I just think back and I'm just like, I think that time was probably my darkest time you in life. You went through so much shit around yeah, that time. a lot of shit. In my, like... This is not even. This is not even including like my childhood. This is like oh, yeah. twenty and up. That was probably yeah. my darkest time You've in my twenties. You've always 20s. been older than me, though, right? Yeah. Was it a year? A or year. Two? Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. But yeah, but TC was probably like my darkest twenties. The darkest yeah. time in my twenties. So for the people that lived with me in that moment, and I still have, I'm still connected to. At this point, I'm like. Y'all must really love me because yeah. I don't know how the hell y'all dealt with me back then. I was You know, I always crazy. thought you had your shit together. Mm-hmm. It was just like the people you let in. Facts. The way I saw it. Yeah. Because um, obviously whether it's like relationship or whatever, you know me. I don't just let anybody, I don't get in a relationship with just anyone. Yeah. But like whenever, you know, but also it could be like the benefit of the doubt or like you really mm-hmm. like this person. Yeah. And so I think it was more so related to like friendships or relationships and there was, i was just so horrible at that but then again i feel yeah. like even now the way i build relationships is completely different than how i was how i did before yeah um and i have more awareness um that's so, good awareness yeah. is good yeah so I'm, I'm in a completely different space so whoever for whoever knew me back then you know, you're growing and growing a little bit of it. Yeah. I love to see and everything, and I'm glad for the experience there, but it was very, like, it was like a a loophole. Like, it was like this place that just, like, sucked it's you like in a, and, like, it's like spit you back well. out. But also just wasn't thing- like that. Like, the person I was in high school was, like, I was homecoming queen, and I was voted, like, oh, most yeah, friendly, and I was, like, that. I was the person that, like, you would go to if you're, like, like for anything, you know? I was yeah. friends with everybody. I, I hardly ever had any issues with people. Um... I always have a person like if you're eating lunch by yourself or you're new to the school, like I'm gonna go yeah. up to you and introduce myself and be like, "Hi," That's good. like That's you know. Really good. And then I got to to Tyler and it was like, it's a completely oh different like living like, over there. Actually, it was just like, and obviously it's a it, small town too. Yeah, and the people that I was like, you know, engaging with, I don't want to like, because people are where they're at in life, and I don't want to bring up anything like yeah, that. Yeah, it's but fine. the people like, I engaged with, didn't know about yeah, them. it was just, it was nah, not good. And they brought out a side. Well, I don't want to say they brought out a side of me, but I brought. There was a side of me that came out that was like, you didn't I, like at the time. No, and I have not ever gone back to that. I think once I moved back home, it was like a breath of fresh air, and it's like I can finally be who I have always been. You know. Yeah. Um, again. 
And yeah, I, you know what? I remember, like, whenever you left, remember we took over your apartment? Yeah. It was me, Carl, and Nando. Yeah. And then Mike is just, like, our friend that always comes over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, no, it was a nice time. And I, I really do appreciate that, you know, you gave us of course. that place. That, it really worked out perfectly, Perfectly, too. the timing yeah. was perfect, yeah. We had this big-ass TV that was just <laughs> in the living room. Did that I leave stuff huge. there? No, we bought it. Oh. Carl bought it. Yeah. Carl and Nando bought it. And it's like, you can't even live your life. Like, when you breathe around the TV, <laughs> this man's like, don't touch my TV. Don't come <laughs> he back. lived for this like, TV. Look, college, like, t- oh, my gosh. Tyler was, like, the days where I lived. I had my kitchen table that my mom gave me. Yeah. I had, like, this passed-down couch. Um, everything was passed down. Um, I probably bought the TV with, like, my refund. And then, oh. like, my mattress was, like, on the ground, like, type yeah. energy, you know? And I had probably, like, 20 hangers and, like, everything was surfed there. So, it wasn't much, but I've always been very independent and I've always made yeah, sure to, like, handle my business. you are always, like, and, bossing it up. Yeah. Like, you started working at, what, you just, like, 14 or something? I was, like, 15 when I started 15? working. 15? Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing. Okay, let's talk about it. I don't want to shift the energy to me or, like, you know, but I feel like a lot of people have a misconception that, like... Like, I had everything handed to me. At one point, somebody was like, you seem like this only child that just, like, just because I give off, like, a great life because, you know, I'm the type yeah, of person where... it's manifestation, Yeah, and it's like, I want to put out everything that I probably don't have just yet, but, yeah, one day my full story will be out, and yeah, people make will Yeah, make a documentary, to, put it on Netflix. I would love that, yeah. No. I think it'll be an amazing one. Yeah. But, yeah, people definitely don't that's another thing but that that's really what people me. do anyways people project. don't ever take the time to really get to know you and it, it's not it doesn't feel good honestly you know? i don't really give a shit anymore yeah. like if i don't care delilah yeah it is what it is like if you're gonna like think i'm this person because like the way i look that's the whole point right i need to look rich you think i'm rich shit yeah. do your thing you know it, it takes energy to have to like um want to be understood like i I don't care to be understood anymore like i'm over that yeah or like to prove myself mm-hmm. and like things that really matter to me were like in the creative side or work or something you know i would put the energy but for like to try to like especially like to people who don't care to really understand you mm-hmm. like they're so um they're so committed to misunderstanding you that's so exhausting you yeah. know i have no energy to like I think if I allow you into my life, because mm-hmm. I don't feel like I just allow anybody like deeply into my life. Like I can have a surface, surface level yeah. relationship or a surface level conversation with you and keep it at that, you mm-hmm. know, because you have those type of relationships. But if I'm letting you into my life and you start off a certain way and I, I guess I just have a different way of like loving and caring that I don't know. Sometimes I if it no, gets you to that point. Lot. It's like, of course, I would kind of like expect you to be understanding, but then no. Like in a relationship, you must like you must understand me. Like obviously, like I'm married. Oh, I hate that I said this. You but, know, you know, <laughs> no, but it's fine. It's okay. fine. It's fine. Um, so I think in the beginning, the problems that we had was the misunderstanding. Because mm-hmm. obviously, like it's the same. We have the same background, as in like uh, the same culture, which I never thought this would ever happen. Mm-hmm. And that goes back to the whole, like, love just slaps you in the face. Like, you don't go really looking. But I'm very grateful for it, of course. Um, but in the beginning, it was so much misunderstanding. I wanted to beat him up. <laughs> Physically. Girl. Verbally. But I, I think it was just more so of, like, you're supposed to do this. Why are you doing this? Mm. And I'm trying to tell you this is who I am. Right. But you don't want to see it. Mm. You know? But eventually, like, it just took a lot of, like, wanting to like work on it on to both like and so yeah he's yeah. really like super good like he wants to like he always wants to like learn grow and you know make mm-hmm. shit work yeah. so that works for me as well and so like we're way past that like now we can say any fucking thing to each other and yeah it's really good like i'm glad i can be myself with you yeah and you love me for myself beautiful you know? i love that yeah. but it's good um to hear it that like that wasn't always the case in the beginning because usually you hear like honeymoon stage and like everything i don't is... even think we really had a honeymoon <laughs> stage <laughs> yeah like, but i guess it goes back to as long as like both people are intentional and both people want yeah, to the then it'll work matter, yeah. you know yeah I think now's our honeymoon stage. Okay. So it's like yeah. in the middle. 
Yeah, because in the beginning, it was just more so like、uh, different upbringings, different mindsets. So I would do this, and he doesn't get it. So it's like a lot of attacking. And I'm just like, why are you attacking me? So it was just a lot of like back and forth.、Mm-hmm. But now that like we actually put the work in to understand each other,、mm-hmm. now we're enjoying like, you、of、know what、course. I mean? Like,、yeah. it's like forever going to be a honeymoon stage. Beautiful. Fingers crossed. I love that.、Yeah. Congratulations on that. Oh, thanks. That's beautiful. Yeah. It feels I, really I, good. Like, no words. I never thought I, not that I never thought I'd see the day, but like, they just like happened out of nowhere, huh? It really did. Beautiful. I'm sure it did. <laughs> I don't know if like somebody planned it, but. Ah,、oh, stop.、Yeah. Who did it? They plot you. Yeah. That's funny. No. Well, I hope you keep flourishing with them. Yeah, same. Yes. I'm I, sure I will. I aspire to be like you one day. Can't wait for the day that I say, oh, I'm married. What have been some of your favorite learning moments in your journey?、Um, I think I've always like, learnt, been learning.、Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like,、yeah. um, Because obviously, like, the women in my culture were supposed to be like quiet, reserved, a bit, you know.、Mm-hmm. So, like, whenever like, you're quiet and you're just like observing, you learn a lot. Yeah. You know? And I mean, whether it's like making a mistake and then learning from that mistake,、mm-hmm. um, or like learning from like your siblings or so, like, I'm always like open to learning. And、um, one big thing I would say. Uh, was that I wish I did、um, the things I wanted to do way earlier. Like,、mm. for instance, going to school. You know, I really love soccer and I wanted、yeah. to play professionally. I even like, tried out for like, professional soccer. Oh, wow. But、um, obviously, in my head at the time, it was just like, your parents are never going to accept this. Like, you must finish school, go to school. They never really wanted me to play soccer,、mm. anyways. And fashion, girl, they're not even like, <laughs> just like, I love it. A doctor, lawyer. Um, nursing, engineering, you know, you got to be like in something that makes sense to them. Yeah. So, fashion, everything, they just think, what kind of nonsense are you doing? You know what I mean? <laughs> They're just like, what kind、I、of love you. foolishness is this?、Uh-huh. Kind of thing, you know? Yeah. So, at a point, I was just like, you know what? I have a bachelor's degree. I'm not happy at all. Even when I walked the stage, I wasn't happy because I was doing things. I was just like, this is what. Um, I'm supposed to do. This is what they want me to do. So I must do it, even though I'm not happy. Yeah. So after a while, I was like,、uh, after I graduated, I didn't really have a job, job,、mm-hmm. because I was just like, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was just like working, like, you know, your regular old job, making、yeah. money. But it's just like you're working to survive and you're not living. Like it's not fulfilling at right. all. Right. And the only thing I would do to live would be like go to like events or like if I want to shoot. Those are the things that kind of gave me the joy. Yeah. You know, but I was just like,、mm, your parents don't want you to do this, or you know what I mean?、Yeah. So I think at one point, I just woke up and I was just like, I'm done. Yeah. Like, I'm done. Like, obviously, I also have my master's. So I went and got.、Ooh. Yeah, I was just like, okay, like, I've already, already have my bachelor's. Let me get something that makes sense、yeah. in my master's and then maybe like go on and like at least make money. But, well, it, I think it was just really an excuse、mm. to be productive or like have、mm. something going for me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I think that's really what it was. But I don't even work in the field of my master's. Oh, wow. I work in a different field. But、yeah. it kind of all makes sense. Like, I believe in education. Education、yes. is good. Like, educate yourself, but like, don't waste your money doing something that someone else wants you to do, you know?、Mm-hmm. So, yes. So, would you do that differently with your children? Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. I would definitely do it differently with my children. Beautiful. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to force them to like, do something they don't want to do for the sake of, like, I think it was just more so like societal pressure or like a lack of education、uh, when it comes to, like,、uh, I don't want to say like my parents. You know, I still feel bad to、uh-huh, like, put、yeah. them out there. But、um, it was just, I don't think it's, I don't want to say they're uneducated or anything. Like, that's not the point. Yeah. But it's just more so like they did not understand what I wanted to do、mm-hmm. and what I was chasing,、right. which is fine because it's my vision. You right. Know? And God put it in my vision for a reason. Yeah. It's not in there, so they can never see it. Yeah. And I can't even like go to them and be like, this is what I want to do.、Mm-hmm. You know, like, I don't have that. 
yeah as much as like people may think like um i'm put together or like i look like i'm so chill or anything you know what I mean? yeah it's just i just w- one thing i really wish i have would be like um where there's like the closeness with like mm-hmm. uh my f- my parents yeah or you know like to get to have a conversation where like you're not being yelled at mm-hmm. because um you went to mexico and you got scammed they're gonna be like <laughs> why did you even go to mexico <laughs> who took you to mexico <laughs> who is in mexico <laughs> they're gonna you know like what took you there how did you get there (laughs) why are you there you know what i mean for that it doesn't make sense you won't sit at home you know sit at home it won't happen (laughs) so don't do anything just sit at home just sit at home (laughs) it will never happen so why were you there (laughs) that's pretty much what they're gonna say oh my gosh you can have the conversation yeah so you're just standing there like I just caused a whole lecture for myself at this point. Every time, like the whole lecture. Yeah, yeah, that's so funny. I love. I even like when we were in school, just like even hearing those stories of like your family and stuff. It was yeah, good times, good times, girl. But yeah, I think that's what I learned in life is to like do the things that you want to do and don't let anyone else like pick it your life for you. Right. I was, my friend and I were talking about it last night or yesterday or whatever. Um, I was asking her, um, do you think uh, people that are living the lives that others want to live, want them to live are happy? You know, and mm-hmm. then you cannot be happy living yeah. the life that someone else wants you to live. It's right. just like the saying of like pretending. Yeah. You know, you're going to get exhausted at one point and just be like, you know what? I feel whether it's like you, you pretend all the way to your 50s and you're just going to be like, I yeah. feel like at some point you'll stop at 40 <laughs> even like you're not gonna get to 50 yeah continuing to pretend to like love your job or like yeah love the career that your parents want you to pursue yeah you know what i mean like you're not like i got so exhausted doing that i yeah. stopped like immediately you do know? you feel like at any point there was were like were they fully pleased or was it like i'm never even gonna meet their expectations i stopped caring okay to meet their expectations yeah I, like you cannot make people happy people have to make people happy yeah you know what i mean like it's selfish to yeah. think that yes i'm going like i'm your only source of happiness like why can't you be happy by yourself Self, yeah you know like i was just so tired of like wanting to like because i mean it, it's like deeper Mm-hmm. because like my upbringing or like you know i just feel like i did not really get um the attention or like the um i don't know it's really deep like mm-hmm. i don't I, I there are certain things that i craved as a kid that i didn't really get okay or like any other normal kid or whatever like you need as a child yeah and like whether it's like favoritism or like because obviously you know like how my family dynamic is yeah 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 Yeah. so it's kind of like that and so like that added up to it i'm like well if you're not giving me this why am i giving you this exactly you know like it has to be it can't be like a one-sided relationship right and that's pretty much what it's like like the parent is this and then the child is like yeah that and i'm not doing that with my kids like yeah these are like humans that did not choose to come into this world right so we're going to have to, like, give them the best life possible, yeah. you know? Yeah. One thing that I always say, well, first off, I want to say that that's great because yeah. I know that your kids are going to get a different experience than you did. Inshallah, so, I hope so. Like, so I'm yeah. praying on it. Yeah. You know? So they're going to be, they're going to be good. Yeah. They're going to get an entire different um, experience than you did, which. They're going to get their own Netflix account <laughs> with their allowance. Stop. <laughs> too cute, too cute. But um, I totally forgot what I was going to say. What my second thing was. But yeah, kids are going to be good. Yeah, kids are going to be good. Yeah, that's exciting. Yeah, we're praying on it. Yes. But three kids still, I love? Uh, I don't know, yes. man. That's a lot of phone bill. Like. <laughs> well, I'll be able to afford three kids, you know? Oh, yeah, we're aiming to be like Bill You'd Gates. be surprised. I One person that I talked to was telling me that he wanted five kids. And he five was... Five isn't bad. <laughs> Five, from three, three to five. five no no three is not bad five is not bad you know like as long as like but the thing for me is just like i want to give my kids the emotional attention mm-hmm. so five 
the, how many emotional attachments do I have to be given one, two, three, four, five? You know what I mean? Five is too much. Yes. Just because you have four, I don't know. Coming but from it's a like, guy, okay, what I if you have normal. What if you have three kids and boom, you have twins? Hey. <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. What do you mean? Like, okay, imagine so you're like five. Okay, imagine you have three kids already, right? And you're mm-hmm. like, okay, this is about to be my last one. It's gonna be yeah. my fourth, my fourth child, and then boom, you have twins. So it's five. It went from We're three to five. Have to so return open. them <laughs> back to Senda for sure. Return to Senda. <laughs> yeah, but uh, twins. I mean, it's fine. Like when we have them, it's fine. The thing is, just like you're just gonna have to work harder. Yeah. Whether it's on yourself, have like maybe like. Add in the extra help, whether yes. it's like um, cleaning, crew, Lord, please let me. You know have what extra I mean? Help. Like having like the source yeah. financially, and like I think it all goes back to financially because if you can afford therapy, you can afford like self care. You can always. I like, definitely you know, want to have enough kids that I can fit into my budget. So I've got. I mean, if my budget's not that amazing and I can only have afford two kids, I want to have. More. I just don't want to bring kids into this world and like. Just leave not, them, you know? Yeah, like, you know? That's not good. Yeah. Yeah, so. that's not good. I don't want to do that, for sure. Well, how many kids do you want, Howard? See, I was thinking one, but... <laughs> I was thinking maybe one. What the maybe hell? half. <laughs> Honestly, I can go for half. I'm fine. But, <laughs> you know... Cut it out! He wants... He's like three it's fine i'm like are you going to pop them out <laughs> yourself who's putting in all the work exactly you want three. he's gonna be How there for emotional support he's gonna be rubbing your back he's gonna be yeah that, that i guess that does it then I might as well <laughs> just rub my him, back I might as well give him 10 right <laughs> he did a great job great support this is a good conversation. This is a great conversation. <laughs> yeah, it's I love chill, it. It's chill. It's vibing. Yes. Very authentic and organic. Yeah. You know, that's always the goal here. Is that how your show usually goes? Or? Yeah. Oh, I, like, good. I have people ask me, girls reach out, like, do you have any preset questions? And it's like, no. We c- You come on and we just, it's a safe space for you to just talk about you, your journey, your goals, what you have going, what oh, you nice. want to do. Um, and just have a uh, an organic conversation so cool yes so what would be a message that you would leave words of encouragement for our next guest um yeah um okay this is this one i stole okay. from like my friend but like yeah my friend was um saying the world is too small to be a bad person mm. so be kind to people and be kind to yourself as well so the world is too small to be a bad person because i might see you like in new york or somewhere like i know you Mm -hmm. you know like yeah you know like it's too small to be like a terrible person yeah we all need each other and like you can't go around being a bad person for your whole life at one point like reality is gonna like check you and you're gonna have to like do the hard work Mm -hmm. on like acknowledging it or and some people that's where their uh, self-awareness comes from yeah. you know like the dark times or like your lowest or yeah. whatever so i think that's how i became like more self-aware beautiful i love that yeah yay yeah i hope that's a good message though. yeah of course anything that has to do with being kind and graceful please yeah always be kind yeah why wouldn't you be kind yeah you like manifest a positive mindset doing Mm -hmm. that you know yeah sometimes it's just sad to know that not everybody i don't know i I, and i know it's like broad to be like everybody but especially people that you love and that you care for it's like you would want the best for them so you would want them to have that same perspective and that same experience so Yes. Well, thank you so much for coming on. We're yeah, not done for yet. Me. Okay. We're not done. Are we yet. playing a game? What's we're nice? no, we're not playing a game. But we. <laughs> but um, I just want to say thank you mm-hmm. for coming on, and I wanted to show you a little bit of my appreciation. So, like you know, this is Bloom, and it's we're all about evolving and flourishing and growing. Yeah. So, um, I hope that you keep doing well. You keep pursuing your passions and yeah. you keep growing and evolving. And I will be on the sideline cheering you on and watching you. Mm. Yes. Um, yeah. And I'm open to connecting um, on more projects or anything, any visions that you may have, any way that I can help. Mm-hmm. Always reach out. Yeah. Um, and then we got you some roses. 
Oh my god. Yes. This is so romantic. So it's like little. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. That's so romantic. So it's like literally giving you your flowers. Oh, this is sweet. Yeah. I don't I didn't think Alex is like it's not for me, girl. Leave me alone. <laughs> Oh wow! Yes, That's I was so gonna beautiful. get you red roses, but there was a certain red that I wanted to give you, and they didn't have the red that I wanted. So I was like, yeah. I'll just go with pink. I mean, this kind of like matches the whole aesthetic. Scenery. Aesthetic. <laughs> so this is my aesthetic for the day. Yeah. Yeah. Just gonna yes. take pictures. We're taking pictures. Oh, we're taking this. a lot of pictures, yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> Yay! So, yeah, that's how we're going to close it off. So let the people know where they can find you um, and what is to come. Okay. Um, so, you can find me on Instagram. I'm more active on Instagram. At Hawahu underscore official. And what's to come, I want to do more, like, um, obviously, I did say, like, the whole editorial thing. Um, but I'm still finding what's for me within like the creative scenery like i'm still exploring trying to see like you know what it is for me so more creativity though still you know so yeah yay thanks for having yes, me yes thank you for coming on you're always welcome to come back and whenever oh, you yeah, want yes for sure i'll bring Hi. the flowers before it's <laughs> too late alec <laughs> Stop. No just for erase the fact that i said erase that. your memories <laughs> i'm screaming okay we're gonna close off okay Alrighty, guys thank you for tuning into this episode and i will see you on the next one yay Bye.